summertime Dungeness crabbing. Nothing can beat a day on the water and eating some fresh crab around the campfire. So today we're gonna go through the top 10 summer Dungeness crabbing tips to help you catch more crabs. What is up Outdoor Mavericks? Welcome or welcome back to the channel where today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite summertime activities and that's chasing Dungeness crab on the Oregon coast. Now when I was a kid in the summertime, we would go down to the Oregon coast and go out crabbing all day long for Dungeness crab. And summertime crabbing is a great opportunity to get out of the water with some really nice weather, catch some crabs and also learn how to go crabbing. And this is when I got to learn how to pull up crab pots and measure crabs properly for the very first time. Now when it comes to summertime crabbing it can be hit or miss and so today I've got 10 tips for that summertime Dungeness crabbing that are going to help you go from mediocre days to really successful days. And that starts with tip number 10, which is to soak your gear a little bit longer, including pots where the crabs can't get out. So you could soak them from 30 minutes all the way up to hours at a time. Now the summer months of Dungeness crabbing are the slowest of the year, which also means it could take the crabs a little bit longer on some of those incoming tides to get into the bay and get into certain areas. So it only makes sense that you can soak your gear and your pots and your trap a little bit longer than normal. Let those crabs get in there, get after the bay, and stay in there longer. Now, if you have a slip ring trap or just a ring in general, you still wanna check those quite often, say every 20 minutes, but also by soaking your traps longer, you wanna be really careful about any ripping tides or a lot of moving water, because if you're not really careful, your gear can flush out of the bay into the ocean pretty quickly. Now tip number nine is something we talk about all the time when it comes to crabbing on the channel, and that is bait. And tip number nine is to make sure that you still have plenty of bait on the boat with you when you're out crabbing. Now, similar to in the winter time, you might have to go through a lot of bait to find the keeper male Dungeness crab. You may have a lot of undersized crabs, you might have a lot of female crabs that you catch in the gear before you continue to find those keeper size male Dungeness crabs. On slow days, it could take a lot longer to get yourself a half a limit or a limit of male crab. So make sure you got it a bait and you don't run out. Now tip number eight is to go dark. And one of the coolest things about Dungeness crabbing is you can do it 24 seven. That's right, on the Oregon coast, you can crab 24 hours a day, which means you can technically crab overnight or leave your crabbing gear overnight in the bay in hopes that when you pick it up in the morning, there's a ton of crabs in there. Or what you could do if you're a more experienced boater and a more experienced crabber and know the body of water that you're crabbing is you can actually pick up your pots overnight in the middle of the night in the dark and crab in the evening and the nighttime but if you've never crabbed overnight in the middle of the dark definitely go with someone that's done it before a more experienced crabber or somebody a friend a family member get to know the area get to know how to do it properly and so that you can go out the next time and really slay the crabs on an overnight trip now tip number seven is to make it a combo trip. And what I mean by that is to utilize your time by dropping the crab pots off in the crabbing areas and then going fishing as well. So you could do a little fish and a little crab combination trip at the same time. And I feel like these are really fun and educational opportunities, especially for kids or for those who really wanna get into fishing, but also crabbing where if you have a boat or a kayak, you can get out there and do both of these on the same trip in the same day and get kids exposure to both of these because if the fishing sucks, the crabbing could be pretty good. And if the crabbing's okay, the fishing actually might be pretty good. So you have multiple opportunities to keep kids entertained, to educate them on both fishing and crabbing opportunities, and to get out there with the full day of sun on the Oregon coast. It is just awesome. And in the summertime when I was a kid, we used to do a lot of crabbing and fishing combos. So I highly recommend if you've got all the equipment, the right gear, and the time, get on those combo trips because they they are the best. Now tip number four is something that I learned over a lot of summer crabbing with my grandpa, which is to spread your crab pots and your crab gear out in the bay that you're crabbing. Now this is the moment where you're gonna have to spread your crab pot gear out because there might just not be one spot where the crabs are at. They might be spread out across the bay and you might have a tiny little area or a tiny little section where the crabbing might be good. But if you have all your crab pots in kind of a small-ish area, you're at a disadvantage to know if the crabs are maybe 100 yards 
yards away, 500 yards away, or like 100 feet, maybe to the left, to the right, or where your gear is at. So spread out your gear, go on some adventures, and then when you find them, get on them and get on them quick. Now tip number five is to not be afraid of negative tides. And in the summertime on the Orkin coast, we have some negative tides where the water is way out in the bays and the beach and the sandy and the muddy areas are way out where you can get and see a lot of things in the bay that you don't normally do when the water is higher up or where there's more water in the bay. But with the negative tides, you shouldn't be afraid of them to go out crabbing on those days. Now the biggest tip that I would say with the negative tides is give it a little bit longer for the water to come into the bay because the crabs will come in on that incoming tide. So if you have like a 930 low tide and water starting to come in on a negative, maybe give it a couple hours. You know, start crabbing at maybe like 1130. But as always with low tides, you want to be very cautious and make sure that with your surroundings that you don't hit a sandbar, that you got enough water, that you're crabbing in enough water. Because as my grandpa did a couple times, he definitely hit the sand and beats the boat. Now tip number four is to go crab early and go leave early. And as we always say, the early bird gets the worm. And in crabbing, sometimes if you go early, the crabs are gonna be plentiful. And so in the summertime, it does definitely pay off to get out there and crab a little bit earlier, especially depending on when the low tide incoming into the high tide is happening, whether it's overnight, early in the morning, sometimes just being the first on the water or getting first crack at the crabs on that incoming tide can be a huge bonus because in the summertime, you're gonna have a lot more visitors down to the coast, a lot more people renting boats, the boat traffic increases, but if you can beat that traffic out to the water, get your pots out there first in the areas that you know that crab well, you're gonna have the best opportunity to get a half a dozen or a limit, or maybe if you're going for a couple limits of crabs, you're gonna get the best shot of hitting those numbers, getting off the water early, and then getting home, cracking open a beer, and enjoying some fresh crab. Now tip number three has to do with baits and that is to experiment with different baits when you're out crabbing. I feel in the summertime because the crabbing is a little bit slower and sometimes you have to just present something of a different bait to the crab that this is a great opportunity to experiment with other different kinds of baits. So, you know you have chicken and fish heads and say tuna bellies are the normal baits that you would present to crabs but this is a great chance to try things like duck legs and pheasant legs and mink and cat food that I've seen people try you know there's all kinds of different things that you can experiment with and just give it a shot and see how it does and just get out there try something different see how it goes it could maybe turn into nothing or you could be a hero and get your limit really quick now tip number two is to be really mindful of crabbing locations. Now on the Oregon coast, there's different bays and waterways that crab much different from north all the way down south. Now there's bays like Newport or Yaquina Bay that have much less fluctuation between fresh water and salt water. That bay stays very salty throughout the year and is probably the best premier location to go crabbing all along the Oregon coast. Now for all the other bays, depending on the fresh water that's coming in from the mountains, from the snow melt offs to maybe if there's rainstorms, depending on like the tide swings in, some bays do crab a little bit better than some of the other bays. But there's also locations in every single bay that do crab a little bit better than most other locations. In the summertime, as you're crabbing or thinking about a trip, be very cognizant of where you're going and how you're crabbing because that could be the key indicator from a mediocre day to a really good day. And now that we've gone through tips two through 10, well, what's tip number one? Well, that is to crab deeper waters. In the summertime, bays are just gonna have a lot less water. There's gonna be a lot more shallower water, but there's also gonna be very specific areas of much deeper water. And those are the areas that the crabs are gonna wanna be around and be located the most. So crab the deeper waters because you're gonna find more crabs, you're gonna find bigger crabs, and you're gonna be a hero when you come home with that big pile of keeper crabs for dinner. And there you guys have it, the top 10 summer Dungeness crabbing tips. I hope you guys got some great information from today's video. And if you did, hit the thumbs up on that video. If you're new, hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, you guys, the outdoors is a gift. Go crabbing with others.